o'clock in the morning till seven at night with the bureaucrats who were kowtowing to me like an ancient China coming in bowing to make sure that the gravy train is not 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 interrupted and making certain that the grants and contracts that they put in place remain in place because that their fiefdoms would be affected otherwise then meeting with the heads of universities the heads of science departments i couldn't do it i don't live to get over on people i'm i'm very unusual that way i don't get off on that i don't get off on people begging me for things in fact i've avoided it all my life don't you think i could have been a moderately successful bureaucrat had i wanted to be well, I never wanted to be. I never wanted to work in such a structure. God knows we need some of them. I didn't say we don't need all of them. But what I'm saying is I don't think I can do it at the end of the day. The most I could do is truthfully be sort of a Ronald Reagan-esque, uh, uh, remember kitchen advisor, what do you call it? His kitchen cabinet, remember that? Ronald Reagan had what was called a kitchen cabinet. What was a kitchen cabinet? It was a group of advisors who advised him outside of the cabinet because they were smarter than those appointed to these bureaucracies, and they had strengths that the bureauc bureaucrats didn't have, while the bureaucrats had the strength of management. That's a whole specialty that you shouldn't underestimate. The ability to manage things in a large organization is not a joke, and the average person could not do it. You need tr tremendous skills for management. There's a lot to be said for bureaucrats who can manage large, large uh, entities with uh, large numbers of people. So we have to be realistic as to what we're, we're asking for and what we can actually do. But without further ado, let's go back in time to uh, the past and run a little bit when we come back right here on The Savage Nation. Welcome back to The Savage Nation. Again, I want to reiterate something. If I'm not for myself, who will be? If I'm only for myself, who am I? I interviewed Donald Trump about the presidency way back in January of 2011, where I asked him, are you running for the president? Long before anyone else was even thinking of Donald Trump, I was asking him about this, about tariffs on China, uh, about making Iraq pay us back for oil, about Iran's possible domination of Iraq and pulling the troops out of Afghanistan. I asked him about running America like a business that's always taking a loss. I talked about China devaluing uh, their currency and how it's killing America's trade. I talked about how uh, other nations don't have any respect for this country anymore. You can find it all, by the way, on that interview. And I, I don't have time. I'm not going to play it for you. But in the next hour, we're going to play snippets of other interviews with Donald Trump to set the record straight. And wait until the real interview of today comes up at 30 after the hour in the next hour, the live interview or today's interview with Donald Trump to be more specific. And you'll hear questions that you've never heard asked of Donald Trump before. Never. And after the interview, you can call the show and tell me if I delivered on that promise or not. So before we go to that, again, I want to invite you to visit the show. Or call it at 855-407-282. Or on Facebook, again, would you use your social networks to tell everyone about the Donald Trump interview that's coming up on the Savage Nation? And would you please go to michaelsavage.com and check out my just released ebook? It's not even published, but it's in time for today, boy. Diseases Without Borders Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases. Yep. And what is that about? Why, well, it's all about immigration, isn't it? With new and unregulated diseases re resulting from unregulated immigration and a politicized public health system. Savage sees the need for changes, starting with the president and the Centers for Disease Control, telling us the truth. And you will find out how to defend your body against deadly diseases, boost your immunity, and learn more about the government's impact on re-emerging and imported diseases and diseases without borders. Even liberals should read the book. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, pomp and 
circumstance. Michael Savage interviews Donald Trump in exactly 30 minutes. I know many of you are hanging on, figuring, ah, it's going to be the same old schmoozy thing. Savage has been in the tank for Trump from the beginning. What do you expect, you know? Well, you're wrong about all of those views because I'm not in the tank for anyone. I just figured he's the best hope we have for the country right now, given the perilous situation that we're in. And I was right. And I started interviewing him. We checked uh, today. The first interview with Donald Trump was on January 10th, 2011. Oh, yeah. Long before anyone else in the media, so far as I know, if I'm mistaken, let me know. Long before anyone else in the media even thought Donald Trump was going to run or could run or would run or might run, I was asking about tariffs on China, South Korea, Iraq oil, Iran's domination of Iraq, running America like a business, devaluing the dollar, how to regain America's uh, uh, the respect for America around the world. And we have the answers from that, from that interview. And then uh, today you're going to hear things I believe you've never heard anyone else ask him. I guarantee you. I'm looking at the questions I have prepared here. Uh, two of them have never been asked by anybody. And I'm going to be very interested in the replies that we get on the Savage Nation. So before we go backwards, uh, 855 if you care to join the conversation. If you want to go to michaelsavage.com, you can do that. You can take a look at the horrible headlines from around the world. And I don't know about timing in the world. They say it's everything. Diseases Without Borders was just listed today as an e-book. I wrote it a year ago. The publisher held it for a year for no reason that I know. And it's an e-book that will be out in a week. And it's about the origins of viruses, like the Zeta virus, and their impact on the U.S. now, what you can do to stimulate your own immune system. You can laugh if you want. I don't really care. Go ahead and laugh. Wait until it's uh, you, you get the correct answers from Dr. Sanjay Bubblegum. Or Sanjay uh, uh, Guppy Fish. If, San if Dr. Sanjay Guppy Fish told you what to do to stimulate your immune system, you'd listen to him, right? But if Dr. Michael Savage tells you, you don't listen because you don't like my politics. Well, do so at your own uh, risk. That's all I can say. Now, let's go to the next important point. Some of these Trump interview flashback questions, they're very short snippets. Let's go to 10.06.15. And this is an important one because... It's on the TPP deal. Many of you don't know what that is. It gave Southeast Asian nations the ability to out-negotiate us. Barack Obama lobbied very hard in favor of this deal. Ted Cruz supported President Obama in giving him this unprecedented power to negotiate this deal. Many of you National Review leaders, uh, readers don't know that. Listen to clip 22 on the Savage Nation. On the trade deal with Asia, I know where you stand. This is not free trade. Even the AFL-CIO Bernie Crackpot Sanders opposes it. Tell the audience, please, why you oppose the trade deal Obama's trying to force down our throats. Well, first of all, it's countries that are going to allow China to come through the back door. You know, they're going to get the biggest piece of it. You watch, as they always do. We're losing uh, almost $400 billion a year with China. But bingo. Almost as important. It's all manipulation. We don't do anything about currency manipulation. We don't know how they're manipulating. The single biggest threat we have is currency manipulation that these countries, and in particular Japan and now China and others, not only now China, now China for years, what they've been doing to us, Michael, with trade manipulation, with monetary manipulation is incredible on trade. So what they do is they make it impossible for our companies to compete, and all it is going to do is take out jobs. And the reason it's going to pass and the reason you have some people supporting it on both Democrat and Republican side is because the lobbyists and the special interests are pushing them hard for certain companies that are big beneficiaries of this. But the country is a loser, and it means jobs are going out of the United States as usual. I read the deal in detail, the best I could do it, Mr. Trump, and I find that small mom-and-pop car part dealers, clothing manufacturers in the U.S. will probably go out of business from foreign-made goods, which will flood into the United States. How can Obama get away with this when even the AFL, the AFL CIO opposes it? How is that possible? Well, the lobbyists representing the companies that want this to happen have contributed to Obama. But these are all lobbyists and special interests, and frankly, they probably represent the countries involved, the 11 countries. But 
they also represent companies that want this to happen because it's good for them but bad for our country. And essentially what it does is it takes jobs out of our country, and as usual, it takes money out of our country. And watch what happens. China is going to come through the back door, and they're going to become a part of it later on at, e at an even better deal. That was from 10.06.15. Ted Cruz, I will remind you again. I'll rub your noses in it. Ted Cruz supported TPP, lobbied for it, along with the lobbyists who are for it. Ted Cruz supported Barack Obama in giving him this extraordinary power. And how many of you who support Cruz conveniently forget this is astonishing to me. You attack Trump, but you don't want to look at the dirt under your own shoe. So you just heard it. You know what I mean? I don't forget things. I have a very good memory when it comes to that. There's another thing you should know. Many critics of Donald Trump say, ah, you know, he never is specific. Right? Don't we hear that all the time? Oh, well, he does is speak in platitudes and generalities. When is he going to be specific? Was that not a specific statement about the TPT deal? The TPP deal? He was very specific. We you can guarantee you he'll undo the deal when he becomes president should he win. So don't tell me he's not specific. I've asked him one specific question after another since 2011. But the doubting Thomas is out there. Oh, he's not specific. He speaks in platitudes. Let him say something more than I'll be great again. America will be great again. He's very specific about TPP, right? In another interview that is worthy of your interest before the interview of today, I asked him on 11 18 15 before Thanksgiving of last year about ISIS. You want specifics? Clip 23, please. What would you do right now to stop ISIS if you were president? I would hit them so hard that you wouldn't even believe it. We would hit them every which way. We have to demean. You know, there has to be a demeaning. Like, I watch where all the networks are calling this uh, wise guy a, a mastermind, the mastermind behind the attack. What's the mastermind? They walk into a place, nobody has guns. They walk into a place, they shoot everybody. He's a mastermind. We have to demean these people. We can't call people masterminds when they're savages. They're just uh, savage, to use a very familiar term. Okay. <laughs> That's I, traumatic I, for I me. I don't want to be a <laughs> <but, with them. laughs> no, no, I get it, but I agree with you 100%. In World War II, we had a propaganda campaign against Nazis and the Japanese. We demeaned them. We humiliated them with propaganda. Instead, we have vermin in the media who glorify them. Topic two, Mr. Trump, when you are president, when you are president, not if, when you are president, would you deport all the Muslim refugees that Obama is rushing into America? Well, you know, I said that uh, four weeks ago. I said, if they come, I'm just putting everybody on notice that if they come, they are going to be deported. Now, it's a very sad thing, and I have a bigger heart than any of them, but we have no choice. We can't. We're a country that has nothing but problems, including $19 trillion in debt. We have nothing but problems. I said, if they come, they will go back if I win. Now, we should build a, f a safe zone along with everybody else. You know, the Gulf states aren't putting up anything. You look at the money they make with the oil and everything else. They don't take anybody. They don't put up any money. They said, why should they when the dumb United States and other countries will do it? Look at what she's done to Germany. So I would hit them so hard. And don't forget, on your show last time, I said, and I've been saying it for two years, hit the oil. Hit the oil, right? I always said, I actually said hit the oil and take it. But right. hit the oil because you take away their wealth. And that's where they get a lot of their money, the oil that they took over, that we gave them when we left. You know, when we left, we gave them so much. It's just not only military, but we gave them everything. So I said, hit the oil. Now, about two days ago, they started hitting the oil. Does anybody say thank you, Donald? Nobody. I've been the only one. I was, I was taking abuse. They said, oh, that's such a horrible thing to say. But now yeah. they're hitting the oil. Well, that was him then. And... Listen to what I'm saying to you. Very specific uh, prescription for the problem of ISIS, right? He didn't speak in platitudes or generalities. He didn't have to map out a war plan. That's all. He had told you what he's going to do. He'll hire a General MacArthur to come in and uh, make sure the plan is enacted. So all of the doubting Thomases and those trying to run him down really have to get with the program and recognize that they're wrong. They're just wrong about Donald Trump. And I think he's the best man for the job, or I wouldn't have put myself out like this. I'm never to think about it. I put myself out like this. I put myself behind this candidacy for five years now when you think about it. Long before other oh, Donald who? What? Are you kidding? That businessman? No, no, no. I'm for this one. I'm remember when the Rand Paul people were running around the country like really crazy people? We'd get calls from the Rand Paulers. Robert, remember those days in radio? They'd call like crazy. Day and night. Well the same thing's happening with the cruise fanatics. They're like the Rand Paul supporters. They're like 
you know, save your Confederate money, the South will rise again. I mean, they may as well print their own currency. They may as well print their own bullion and give it out to each other. How fanatic.